One of the most uh, often asked questions uh, Kyle and I get at Make Math Moments when we could deliver problem-based lesson professional development sessions for districts or when we're doing our webinars, um, we, we use a lot of animations and that question we get is like, how do you do with those animations? Like, how are you making it look like that? How do you, how do you are you creating those problem-based video lessons um, with your students that gave off this kind of animation look. And so that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. We, most people are asking us how to do that. We're gonna teach you here. Let's go. Hey there, Math Mo Makers. John here from Make Math Moments. And if you have not yet subscribed here on YouTube, make sure you do that. Each week we are sending out uh, videos, uh, short videos just like this one on how to do something in the classroom or how to teach a particular topic or what resource to use. Uh, we've got uh, we've been doing this on YouTube here for over a year now, uh, in addition to the podcast that uh, we put out also weekly. So in this video, we're going to talk about animations and how to set that up. We're going to dive right in. We're not going to waste any more time. Um, I'm going to start with a lesson I did actually this week with my students on um, optimization and uh, looking at how, uh, you know, that particular problem that you can imagine that problem if you're doing optimization of rectangles, if you think about all these different rectangles, I have a set perimeter of rectangles. Like I have this pen that I have to... Uh, I have to enclose with a set perimeter or uh, a set amount of fencing. Um, what's the biggest possible uh, area I can enclose with that set uh, fencing? Like let's say I have 24 meters of fencing. Uh, what's the biggest possible area? So this is a very common investigation you might do with your students. Um, and how do, how do you make that more engaging? And this is, this is uh, I'm gonna show you the lesson I did this week to do that with my students. Um, I'm just gonna start right here and I show this to my students. I say, hey guys, get ready. Um, I'll write down some things you're gonna notice and things you're gonna wonder. Here is the this kind of weird video. Um, I'm gonna play it maybe a couple times just so you can wrap your head around what's happening, but jot down a couple points under things you notice and things you wonder. Here is the video. Now you probably start to get the idea of what's happening here. My students, I, I don't usually say a word until it's fully done, but uh, after we, we, we'll take the notices and wonders. What did you notice? What do you wonder? Students will say, you know, I see different rectangles. I see different areas being made. Some students will say, I notice the same number of little sticks every time or line segments. Um, and then usually a question will pop out for a wonder or many questions do pop out. But another one that we're focusing on here is what's, what's, uh, What's, where's the biggest area? And so I'll, we usually play it again. And then I have my students call out, like yell out, which one of those makes the biggest area? And then we're off into thinking about, well, okay, what do we need to make that happen? Let's look at what, how many sticks are actually there. There are 24 sticks. Let's start drawing rectangles that use 24 sticks and see if we can figure out which ones have certain areas. Hey, let's start to track that on a graph in a table and we'll start to piece together which uh, dimensions are making that happen. So the question we get, we'll get, and I'll link to that lesson below so that you can use it in your classroom if, you, if you're if you teaching optimization of rectangles. Um, but uh, the, the software that we are using to make that happen, it's not, a, it's not like this fancy movie making software, it's actually just like PowerPoint, but uh, I have a Mac and so I use Apple Keynote, which is its, its, its presentation software. So the presentation you just saw was, I also usually create some of my handouts in there. It's a very versatile program, but uh, you'll see that uh, they're just slides and I've got some slides in here that you just saw. Now I, uh, I created that and the purpose here is to show you how to do that. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring across the actual uh, slideshow that I made that in, and uh, I'll, I'll give you the tips on how to recreate that yourself. And uh, from that, you can think about how to create any sort of animation. Um, there's almost all the anim actually I'm gonna go on a limb here and say all the animations that are on our Make Math Moments problem-based lessons and tasks and units website are all created in Keynote. Um, so so here we go. So if you think about it, actually. Think, think about it like this. If you were ever young, hey, you were young. I, what I mean is 
when I was young, um, we used to draw like little stick figures in the corner of our notebooks at school. And then you would, you would change one little piece at a time and you would flip it and it would give off this animation. Look, this is, and, I, and that's how animation was done a long time ago before computers. Um, in, a, in, a, in, in a sense, that's kind of what's happening here on the back end of Keynote, uh, but it's actually even easier than that. So, so one way you could, you could uh, create a slide and then move and duplicate that slide and then move a piece, very small amount, every time and keep duplicating that and then you just run through the slides fast, that would create animation. That's, that's kind of what's happening here, but it's even easier than that, okay? So super easy. For like For example, I have, uh, you on the side here, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Uh, you can see that the first slide I have here is I have my sticks right here. And I have, uh, on the next slide is the slide that it's gonna transition to. And all of a sudden the uh, sticks are now arranged in a form of a rectangle. And so all I did was I duplicated that slide like that. And then I just moved these sticks to where I wanted them to go. And so what happens here is I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that just so I all I move those and I and I added this rectangle I drew a rectangle right here so I went to shapes and I drew that rectangle and I put that rectangle in there to show that that area and the magic here is is that Keynote will actually fill in the animation for you um, it'll it'll think hey where did this where did this little line segment go in this picture and it actually fills in the animation to go from one to the other automatically. You don't have to create any more slides than these two to give off that impression. So for example, if I created a brand new presentation, um, let me create a blank one here. I'll make something very simple so you can see it. Let's see, let's see if I just wanted a rectangle and I wanted to show that that rectangle moved from here to here across the screen. It's simpler than you think, okay? So I don't have to create a whole bunch of slides that move it slightly. You just create two slides. Like there's the start. This slide, I just duplicated the slide. As long as I duplicate it and they have the same object on both slides, Keynote's gonna fill in the gap for me. So I'm gonna go to the second slide. I'm gonna move it to where I want it to go. And see that? Keynote's gonna go, hey, I'm gonna try to move that from there to there and fill in any missing pieces so it looks like animation. So all I have to do is I have to tell it what slide transition to do. That's it, it's just a slide transition. So I come over here to my transitions, my animate button, and I add an effect from a transition. And the, the one we want is called magic move. There it is right above my head right there. Magic move is our go-to, okay? So that, look at that, and it gives me a little preview. I like to, you can play around with how fast you want it to move. I like to like go 0.7, it goes pretty fast. You can click the preview button and then boom, it goes there. And so then when you play this on the big screen here, uh, I, just, I just click my mouse and it looks like it moved. And so I didn't really do anything other than make two slides. So, so if I go back to my, my original one that I was sharing with you, let's go find it, here it is right here. Um, you'll see that all I did was I have slide one with a whole bunch of line segments. Slide two, I arranged those lines, uh, line segments the way I wanted them. And then I just made sure that it's got a magic move uh, transition to go between the two. And so when I click play and I click my mouse, it shows those and then it, boom, magic move did all of that and it made those move. I didn't actually make the move. And so then I just duplicated that slide and moved it here. And so then now I made a magic move so that it goes, it looks like it's gonna go and form them and then it goes back and that's it. And so that's how I created that animation. So you'll see that this is uh, 20 slides and it was just really making some rectangles along the way and using the same original slide to say have them go back and uh, uh, to this kind of like disjointed, scattered look. And then they form a rectangle and then they're back to scattered and then they form a rectangle. And Magic Move does the rest. That's how we've done almost every single one of our animations on our website is thinking about what you want it to look like 
And if you think about how you want it to animate, just duplicate from slide to slide and uh, you can make that animation. So similarly, like if I go back to our kind of basic one here, uh, one thing that we do in our, our presentations uh, a lot is we have things slide in from the outside. So we might have a title right here and we might make this title really large. So maybe like I'll make it a, like that and we'll say, you know what, we're gonna have that come slide in. It's easier than we think for these slide ins. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna duplicate that. And on the original one, I want it off the screen. And so then it looks like it will go onto the screen and will slide in from the top. And so now I just, boom, I just created that from one to the next. It gives it that, uh, that animation look, even though I'd really just duplicated a slide. Or I could have it slide uh, in from the side. I can just put it over here to the side and magic move has done the rest. And so the other thing is it could be lots of different things happening on your screen at the same time. Uh, so as long as I have the same object on the screens from one to the other, magic move will fill in the rest. So you can be pretty creative with how you want your animations to look by just putting objects on the screen, duplicating into the screen, and then moving those things around. And just make sure you have a slide transition from one to the other. Okay, so so that's that's just a quick a quick little demo for you. Now the question might be like, well, what do I do if I don't have Apple Keynote? Uh, rest assured, um, if, depending on what you do have, you, there are some tools in other things that you can use. So for example, I queued up, I don't use PowerPoint very often, but I do have PowerPoint on my machine. So if you bring up a PowerPoint presentation, you can do almost the same thing here. Um, so for example, I'll just put a rectangle on the screen. I will duplicate that and I'll move it somewhere else. Um, and uh, PowerPoint here has a, a slideshow transition similar to Magic Move. They don't call it Magic Move. It's called, I believe, Morph. Uh, so let me just, I think I've already got it going on here, but let me just go to the transitions. Here we go, transitions. You can see the transitions at the top here. Um, morph is the one that you're looking for, okay? So I, I've got Morph included on there. So if I go to slideshow and I play my slideshow and I move, look at that, it did the exact same thing. It looks like it's going back and forth just because I have morph uh, as a slide transition, okay? So that's, if you want it, it's the same, exactly the same thing um, if you have PowerPoint. Now, if you do not have uh, PowerPoint, like Google Slides, I was looking at Google Slides the other day, I have not yet found that transition in Google Slides. I, I'm, I'm sure somebody's made an add-on, uh, but I don't know, I don't know. I don't know it on Google Slides, I don't use it very often. Uh, for this type of thing. Now, if you want, once you make your slideshow, you could record it and all of a sudden now it's a video or you could export it as a video and now you've got this movie that's like an animation. So that is how you animate and create animations or maybe just create uh, really cool slideshows uh, for your students or maybe you're doing a presentation, uh, super cool stuff there. Um, Check it, check it out. Give it a try. I'd love to see it. Uh, if you got any questions or or, or wonders, uh, throw them in the comments below, uh, or tweet us at Make Math Moments, and uh, we'll we'll have a peek. But uh, that is your quick tip here today on animation. Take care.